I, I was told that I shouldn't tell her bio because she's going to do that herself. And I don't want to spoil anything. But I will say she's been a fantastic collaborator uh, in this task of, of, of emceeing for you. And uh, it's been a pleasure working on this together. Um, I've, I've worked with her as a colleague, as a builder before. I hired her on a project that uh, you may have heard about. Uh, or we did a presentation of it just now. Um, extraordinary builder, very patient, very uh, just showing up. That's, that's, that's a big part of it. And the fact that she uh, stepped up and volunteered to help on my project was fantastic. She's also become a dear friend, and she is a great dog sitter. So, I will leave it to her to uh, tell you more about herself. So now, with no, with, without further ado, I present to you Kelly Bartlett. I, um, I've had an interesting year, um, and so we needed a keynote speaker for tonight, and I said, well, I can talk about the year that I've had, because um, a lot has happened. Um, so I won't keep you too long. I know we have things to get to tonight, um, but I just want to say a few few things. Some of you know um, some of the stuff I've done over the last year. I don't know if everyone knows everything, so I'm just going to kind of summarize it and talk about some of the things that I took away. Um, and it actually started... I want to share the story, which happened not in the last year, um, but a few years ago, when I had gotten into mock building, and I had my Lego room set up, and my husband and I had a meeting with our financial advisor, who is in a different state. Um, <laughs> not what you think. We were talking about college savings, <laughs> college savings plans. Um, but he is in a different state, so we had never met in person. We don't meet, and we had a Zoom call, because that was a new thing, and it was easy. So we had a Zoom call on my computer, which was set up in my Lego room. And so John and I were both sitting there on the call, and we got on Zoom and said our hellos. And, you know, as I'm sure all of you know on any Zoom call, like in someone's Lego room, you see all of their drawers in the background. So we were chatting for a few minutes, and our advisor, his name is Mitch, he said, um, what room are you guys in? And John jumps in real quick, because he loves to say, like, oh, this is my wife's Lego room. <laughs> and there's a pause, like, he doesn't say anything. And so he continues, like, yeah, she builds these Lego mocks, and or he says models, um, so no one knows what mocks is. Um, but you know, she works in this room, she's got all her pieces sorted, she has at least a million pieces, and I always say it's not a million. It's not really. It's not. Um, and she has them all organized because when you look behind us, you can see the drawers. They've got, you know, you can see the colors. Like everyone knows what those organized drawers look like. And I like taking meetings in, the, in our Lego room because it actually makes a great background for a Zoom call. So he's explaining all this and says, yeah, she does Lego building and um, those are all her pieces back there. They're all really organized. And after a pause, Mitch says, you play? with Legos. <laughs> and he did say Legos, but I didn't correct him on that because the way he said it, you play with Legos, it triggered something in me. Um, and I felt like I needed to respond to that first and I got kind of defensive. I said, well, I, I wouldn't really call it play. It's, I said, it's more like, and I tried to think of all the words that could convey my dedication to the hobby and all of the important things I got out of it so that he would take me and Lego building seriously. So we all just sat there while I tried to voice an adequate justification of my very serious and meaningful hobby. <laughs> other than play. <laughs> so we sat there for an extended silence that went on for way too long, and I finally said, yeah, it's play. <laughs> I play. And he said, cool. <laughs> so no big deal. 
And it was the first time that I had to articulate what it was, thank you, that I got out of Lego building. And the first time, it was the first time that I owned up to saying that play is valuable and important to me. I hadn't ever had to justify my hobby to a non-AFOL before because I had only ever talked to people in Portland and Lego communities online. So that moment with our financial advisor was very empowering for me, just admitting out loud, yes, it's play and I love it. Since then, I've had many more opportunities to interact with people about the Lego hobby, especially this past year. I feel like I've had about 10 years worth of significant Lego experiences packed into the last 18 months. The Lego hobby has been intense for me lately. So some of you may already know a few of the experiences I've had, but bear with me as I summarize my year of intense Lego. Because in all of my experiences, I found myself meeting and interacting with people outside of Fort Lug and outside of my regular Lego groups and communities. And just like I did with my financial advisor, I've had to articulate and explain my interest in Lego to many different people in many different capacities. My year of intense Lego started in the fall of 2022 when casting for season four of Lego Masters began. I had to talk with casting agents and do lots of interviews, all focused on my Lego hobby. So I frequently had to verbalize what it means to me and why I might be a good fit for the Lego Masters show. During the process of interviewing for Lego Masters, I, always, I also received two exciting invitations from the Lego group. One, was to participate in a collaboration on their social media channels to celebrate 25 years of Lego Star Wars. And the other was an invitation to display my mocks in Masterpiece Gallery at the Lego house. <clears throat> I said yes to both. <laughs> Even though I knew I may have to go out of town to film Lego Masters, this was all happening in the same weeks. Um, but I went forward with both projects, um, starting with a meeting with representatives from the LEGO group about creating a Star Wars build to showcase on their social media. And this ended up being the one, which I had here at Briggs Cascade last year, so you might have seen it. Okay. Why is that sideways? Oh no. <laughs> it's sideways. Okay. Um, I would keep going my way. I was also working with the staff and the designers at the Lego house to plan a Masterpiece Gallery exhibit and a trip to Billin for the opening. I knew that month one mock would be going on exhibit, which is this one, which is my chocolate shop, which is sideways, but um, you might have seen it before. I've had it here on Briggs Cascade. So I knew that would be going on the exhibit, but it wasn't enough to fill the space. So I was working with them on creating a second build that would make its debut when the exhibit opened in September. And then I got the call that I was indeed being cast on Lego Masters season four. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the weekend before I left to film Lego Masters, I worked nonstop to build that Star Wars mock to be featured on Lego's social media channels. Um, I recorded the videos they needed signed and returned the Lego house contracts and documents, and put my plans for the new Masterpiece Gallery uh, build on hold as I prepped my home and my family for being on their own for seven weeks. I flew to Atlanta and spent the next several weeks working long hours and creating Lego builds under the most stressful conditions. <laughs> it was probably the most intense part of my year of intense Lego, but, I also got to meet people from all over the continent, including some who are Lego builders. So the cast of the show was, you know, a group of Lego builders, but also many people who were involved with Lego as a part of their job, but aren't necessarily Lego hobbyists themselves. And yet we were all brought together because of Lego. And it was interesting to see the variety of everyone's perspectives on the hobby. So you might not recognize people in the picture, but these are the people like behind the scenes of the show that you never get to see that are really awesome to work with. And they do love Lego, they just don't necessarily build it themselves. So that was very interesting perspective for me. When I returned home after filming, I did not take a break from Lego as many people have asked. They'd say, are you burnt out on Lego building right now? And I couldn't be burnt out because I had a lot more ahead of me. 
Briggs Cascade was coming up, so I brought models to that. And immediately after the convention, I had an opportunity to create a large model for a local business. I continued to say yes to everything. I didn't want one Lego opportunity to pass me by. <laughs> so during the summer of 2023, I was constantly building. I worked eight to 10 hour days on a five foot model of the historic Oregon Butteville store which is this, um, and I started planning my build for the Lego house, finally. I delivered this Butteville commission at the end of July, which gave me one month to focus on finishing my model for the Lego house. It was going to be a large vignette, similar in size and style to my chocolate shop, a build full of character without any actual characters in it, but this one was a clockmaker's studio. I was really proud of the amount of building I accomplished last year. It was intense. Um, my year of intense Lego continues though, because then it was on to Denmark for a fantastic two day experience at the Lego house. Um, so here you can see the two models together, which I already had the chocolate shop and then I made the clockmaker studio and I wanted them to look good together, kind of like a series of two. Um, which maybe I could add more to it, but they kind of had to look cohesive and that was one of the things I had to work with the, the Lego house designers on because I had other ideas of models I could bring to put on display and they were like, eh, like they don't look good together. So they, the, the exhibit had to look good. So those were the two that I ended up with at the Lego house. Um, I got, um, I was able to get a private tour of Lego headquarters and um, this was the first time I got to see my butterflies on display, which I was very excited. They had been there for a couple of years. I was told they were there. No one was ever able to send me a picture of them on display. So this fall or last fall, I finally got to see them hanging on the wall and it was awesome. Um, and then I also had my first time at Scareback Fan Weekend because that was all happening around the same time. But the best part of everything was meeting every single person I got to meet there. Um, there were the other exhibitors um, from all over the world. Some didn't speak English. It was great. <laughs> like we all were there for the same reason and got to know each other as best we could in those two days with the language barriers, but it was, it was awesome. Um, the Lego house staff was amazing. Um, they're just so full of life and they love to play and they love their jobs. Um, so that was really fun. Um, that was, Millie was so fun. And then that's Catherine Kirkmuff, the managing director of the Lego house. Um, and then Cal Kirk Christensen showed up while we were there, which was a huge surprise. <laughs> it, was a, it was a surprise for the Lego house staff also. They say they don't know if he's ever coming by and it's kind of sporadic. And so the fact that he just showed up was amazing. Um, so I, we took that opportunity. I got to show up my models. Like it was, it was unbelievable. And then at uh, Scareback, I got to meet other LEGO Masters contestants from around the world, which I had watched some of their seasons and some of them I couldn't. So it was just, it was, again, it was another, those of you who've been to Scareback, you know, like when everyone comes together from around the world, it's just, it's really crazy that we can all kind of connect over LEGO. Um, and so once again, everyone I met there was, for, was there for the same reason. Lego, but every person saw Lego differently and approached the hobby with a different purpose and focus. Um, the day we got back to Oregon was the premiere of Lego Masters season four. So John and I literally walked off the plane into our, our front door and turned on the TV because the first episode was starting. Um, and so for the next nine weeks, we hosted watch parties and meet and greets in four states and I got to meet all kinds of people of all ages and walks of life who love Lego in many different capacities. Um, Lego Masters aired September through December uh, and kept me pretty busy but be before the year was up I said yes to two more commissions and made one more mock just because I thought it would be funny to make a raft of ducks. <laughs> I made last year that it didn't have a purpose other than my own enjoyment. <laughs> I didn't go for anyone else but me. So, okay, 
So my, leg, my year of intense Lego has been fascinating to me because I've seen firsthand how everyone views this hobby with a unique perspective. And like I've said, people get into it for different reasons, stay with it for different reasons, focus on different aspects of the hobby, and generally get out of it what helps them the most. I was curious about how people would put this into words for themselves, and I wondered if everyone I met this past year had to say what Lego meant most to them, what would they say? Or if I could ask anyone in this room what Lego means to you, what would you say? I decided to use the best tool I could access for this kind of research social media. <laughs> I asked the question on my social media networks and groups about what Lego is for everyone. That is, I wanted to know what the Lego hobby means to people, what it does for them, or how it affects them. I left it very open-ended, and I just asked people to finish the thought, Lego is. I said it could be a word or a sentence, but what is Lego to you? <clears throat> I got hundreds of responses. And as they came in, I started to notice patterns. Uh, many of the responses fell into similar themes, so as I recorded each response, I began grouping them into the, the theme of that response. And it was interesting to me to see what everyone said and what were the most common types of responses. So I'd like to share that with you. Um, here are the results of my super scientific social media survey on what LEGO is for all of you. So to fill in that blank, you said, Lego is expensive. <laughs> These were all the responses that had anything to do with how much it costs, and there were so many ways you guys said it. Um, Taking over my house drains my bank account, I'm broke. <laughs> so no surprises there. You also said it is addictive, and it, usually that was the one word, it was a one word answer, addictive, it came in so many times. Casey Ross called it plastic crack, <laughs> so I wrote that one on there. Um, you said Lego is nostalgic, so all of the answers that came in about how it reminded you of being a kid or brought back memories of your childhood, um, I kind of put those all into this category about being timeless, um, a portal to my inner child, one person said, I remember building Lego as a kid and now I build with my daughter. So I put that in nostalgic, is bringing back memories like that. You said Lego is a tool, um, uh, you know, one of the greatest teaching tools. Uh, I liked this quote, Lego is a toolkit just like math. Uh, the end possibilities are infinite, but everyone gets the same tools, which is true. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. <coughs> Um, and then there were responses that I, they kind of defied categorization, so I, I put some of the ones on here that I, that I liked. Um, somebody said it was an ex a, a sensory explosion of goodness. Um, Lego is love. Lego is more than a toy. Lego is good in any dose. I liked all those and I didn't quite know what category to put them in, so I just have this other's category. Um, other people said food for thought. Um, Lego is constant. Lego is collectible. And somebody said, Lego is part of my body, which I wasn't really sure what that meant. <laughs> Maybe they need a tattoo, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I like that. Some people said Lego is stress. <laughs> Not stress relieving. Some people, this is more than once, people said, it is just stressful. <laughs> But more than that, people said the opposite, that it is stress relieving. I put this into a category I called therapy because a lot of people did say therapy and anything along the lines of being relaxing, um, de-stressing or being an escape from reality, I kind of put those all into the same category. Um, safe space, um, an escape. I, some of them were very personal, the answers that people gave, they said, save me from alcoholism. And then somebody said, cheaper than therapy, which I might, I might argue against that. <laughs> yes. yeah. I don't actually know if it is cheaper than therapy. 
Um, another of the more common categories was I put all the responses about joy and happiness into this happiness category um, because a lot of them were about fun, it, Lego is awesome, Lego is play, um, anything about being happy um, fell into this category. Somebody said surprise and delight, I love that. Um, Lego is creativity. So anything about art, creativity, freedom, creative freedom, um, a creative outlet. People had all different kinds of ways of saying this, but I got the message that it is somehow related to art, creativity. And another thing which I called perspective, um, because people did say it's like seeing the world through a different lens. And so I put that into the creative and freedom category. So it's creativity for a lot of people. <clears throat> and then a lot of people said community. Um, there were some great quotes in here, I did not include them all. A friend who didn't leave when I was all alone. Um, Lego is responsible for who I am today. Anything about friendships and relationships fall into that I put into this category. Um, family, um, uh, date night, that was a good one, that came up a lot. Um, somebody said Lego is home. I don't always feel that I can be myself in my day-to-day -day life, but the friends and family I've made in the Lego community are the light on those darker days. Um, and then the final category, I think that's the final category. Um, people said Lego is life, and in a variety of ways they said that, like Lego is more than a hobby it's everything, it's a way of life. Some people, for some people who answered the survey, Lego is their job, they work at Lego, so they said Lego is life, like, literally, it's my life. And then a few people, more than one person said it was life changing. Um, so if you're like me, you're nodding to each one of these, because maybe that's not, maybe this slide isn't how you would have answered the question, but you get it, like you are seeing the reasons why these answers are up here. You recognize the value of all of these responses, Especially, <laughs> no surprises. Um, but here is the here's the visual representation of how I how it all breaks down. The most common answer was it fell into my therapy category of relaxation, de-stress, escape. Um, that that overall was overwhelming for the, the most common responses that came in. Creativity was the next largest category of your answers. Um, fun and community, um, and then they get smaller and smaller, and the very smallest, the ones that don't have number or percentages up, up there because there's not enough space, the 1% sliver is the people who just said it was straight up stress, so. <laughs> up to just 1%. Um, for me, this past year, Lego has been opportunity. Because of LEGO, I've had the opportunity to take on new challenges, meet people around the world, and grow, uh, per personally, professionally, and creatively. A lot of people said they enjoy LEGO as a way to relax, and this last year of my LEGO hobby has been somewhat accelerated, so it has been a bit less relaxing for me, but LEGO still means the same things to me as everyone has said. Despite my year of intense LEGO, it is still fun, happiness, art, community, escape and expensive <laughs> but most importantly it is play we all know this lego means play well so back when my financial advisor asked if i play with lego i became needlessly defensive but it's certainly nice to know i don't have to react that way here you all get it and i hope that all of you keep that in your minds this weekend remember why we're here together and how we can support one another and know that we belong to a community in which we will never have to defend the value of play to each other yeah.